So, we are back on the Coleman CT200U-EX full switch mini bike. Slash hog. Hog. <laughs> uh, so we've got our CR80 foot pegs. You've seen us put these on every mini bike. They're cheap. They're like 15 bucks for them. They're super well made. Go ahead and put them there. That's a good ounce, at least. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to show you uh, for the 15th time how to mount these and get rid of These will snap on you eventually. They Every set we ever had. They're not good. Garbage. And anyway, <laughs> they're cast aluminum. So we're also going to mount our oil catch can. This is a baffled oil catch can from Amazon. So, so you can see it's uh, double baffled and it has some windage trays in it. So it keeps from bumping around on these mini bikes, keeps oil from coming out your oil filter or your air filter on here. We also have off of one of the mini choppers we used to have, we have these sweet handlebars that I think look fits the whole look of this with the Harley tank. So we're gonna put these handlebars on there and we'll probably end up painting them black later. I don't like chrome too much, but we're gonna swap these out, put a new twist throttle on it from Go Power Sports, and uh, we're gonna get the muffler mounted. We went with this shorter, the shorty 40 muffler, and it's supposed to go on this side of the bike, but we're gonna mount it on this side. But uh, it looks awesome, has a removable baffle. These are our favorite mufflers to use. So, one weak spot on these common bikes is the neck tube area. This is where a lot of people break it, is around in this area right here. So we're gonna gusset over top of that. Lonnie has cut out some plates. We're just gonna TIG weld these plates in to strengthen up that neck tube. And we also have some to do over top of this right here to close in this. I think it'll look pretty sweet. And we're gonna do some dimple dies in these, like one big one, one smaller one. I think that'll look awesome. We may even do some dimple dies in that. And I've never used them, so check out the swag off-road links in the video description on our dimple does. So a lot to do. We're finally going to cut that jack shaft down and also put a kickstand on this hog. So uh, let's the reason we haven't cut that down is because it's the kickstand, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, propped up on it. So first, we're going to start off with these foot pegs. You just pull the pin on the bottom, slide the little retaining pin out, and then there'll be a spring and a plate and stuff. This one's been taken apart before. So if you notice these will almost fit perfectly in there so the only thing we have to do is put a washer in here to make up this gap and we have to drill out these holes to a 5 16 now with that hole and of course we don't have our washer yet this 5 16 bolt will go in there and then we can weld on a piece of flat stock that will be our stop so they'll still collapse up if you was to hit something but they'll have a stop to hold them like that so we'll get a piece of flat stock made and we'll grind the paint off this weld the flat stock sticking out we'll have new cr80 foot pegs Nice, they're kicking it in. One washer So I made these stops out of quarter inch. The reason I did so thick is because when you jump, your feet's on this, it hits this hard. We've used eighth, eighth inch before and it just bends it. So we switched. You live and you learn. You live and you learn. You can't do this with the glove on. Boom. Now we can put a lock nut on this. So this will, you know, we can adjust the tightness of it. But when it goes down, hits that and stops. Perfect. Okay, so we got these panels made up. Lonnie cut these out of some 14 gauge sheet metal. You can see we want to put those over top there. I didn't want to leave them smooth, so I put a 7 16 hole there and a 3 quarter inch hole there, and that's to use a dimple die, a hole punch and a dimple die. So this is what our finished product is going to look like, and it does warp up the steel just a little bit, but we can clamp it in there real good. But that looks amazing compared to just a slick piece of steel in there. 
So we are going to do a full product review on a separate video on these dimple dies and hole punts from Swag Off-Road. We've been using Swag stuff forever and they are an amazing company. But what you're going to need, the easiest way to do it is to get a hydro hydraulic punch driver kit from Harbor Freight. If you can read that. And this will come with pipe sizes and we want tube sizes. Uh, but you could use pipe and you can buy the pipe dies from Swag Off-Road. We have the tube dies from them. So what we need to do first is punch our larger hole in this. How we're gonna do that is put the spacer that comes with the driver kit. We're gonna slide on the female part. This is the male part with the actual cutters. So then we can slide that on there. Thread that all the way against it real tight. Make sure to close your valve. Watch how quickly this bust straight through it. There we go. Nice big hole. Now we have a huge hole. Even if you're not dimple dying stuff, this is still super handy for huge holes. Now, this is the one thing I found is getting the metal off is a little tricky. So look at that. Super clean hole. These are made out of some crazy hardened steel, so you can punch a ridiculous amount of holes. So now we can take this whole setup off. How thick did you say they go up to? Eighth inch? Steel? Oh, thick, yeah, yeah, eighth inch thick of steel, which is crazy. That's pretty thick sheet metal. So yeah, quite this, fit. this piece of metal. Now, since it isn't wedged in there, we can screw that out. And there's the hole that was punched out. So that is amazing. So now we can put this shaft back in there, small threads in. Have our large die, we put the female side on first. Then the metal. You need to make sure you have what side you want the dimple to start because it's going to protrude one way and we want it to go this way. So now we slide that on. And then I take, so we use the old hole punch as a nut. I'm going to buy just a nut to hand tighten on there, but now we're ready to punch hole. And it's going to warp the steel up a little bit, but it'll straighten it out quite a bit by the time we punch the hole through. All right, now, just unthread that off there. that quick we have a dimple and that is amazing and you can set this up in a hydraulic press you don't have to use one of these punch drivers but it's just quick you can box it up get it out of your way so we'll get the other one done then we can start welding these on and uh, getting this puppy done We can now cut the jack shaft off. Uh, it, it's no longer a kickstand. We have our kickstand on. We haven't welded the back of stuff like these bars under here need welded. This is only tacked on. But we're gonna get everything built and disassemble it, weld everything out. Still gotta make the brake bracket because we are gonna keep drum brakes on the rear. They always work really good for us. And we're gonna have front disc brakes in the future. So we gonna cut this puppy off. Kickstand. She works great. It's in like the perfect spot for your heel to grab it there. So and it doesn't keep it at a right angle to where it just <laughs> wants to fall over. I think what Coleman did was welded these dead on the bottom, if I remember. So it's, I mean, they was literally they're straight up. So you either need to cut a little bit. The easiest thing to do is cut this down some and re-weld a foot back on it. You can do a foot out flat stock, so you can just cut this down about a half inch to an inch. I like them to be leaned over a little bit more because if you're on any kind of a incline, you can't get your bike set up, but this thing looks so good. 
I like it a lot. So we'll get the handlebar swapped out real quick. The dimple guys just make it pop. Oh, they add so much, it's crazy. We can do some risers on these handlebars too, if we see fit in the future. It's a sick looking mini bike. Do the handlebars have much look? Oh yeah. I think it it flows well with the rest of the bike if they're black. Just paint them black and they'll look look oh, like yeah. they belong. Cause it's all Harleyed out. Yeah. I did have some dirt bike handlebars, but I would have to run some risers on them. This is the sickest looking mini bike I think we've built. Mm -hmm. uh, the high tech mini bike was pretty sweet, but I just didn't like how it rode, so hopefully this one rides a little better. Uh, Nacho's dad's Looks like garage. it should. Huh? Oh yeah. Nacho's dad's garage has a high tech mini bike, so if you want to go see that thing live on in all its glory, it doesn't have the high tech engine on it right now, but it will eventually. So now we have this tack. We're going to put right down in here, and that's going to be so sweet. That's going to look awesome in there. We'll actually have a working tack. Jeepers, mister, you're really strong. Look at these son of a guns. We got some brand new tires. These are 21s where we had 19s on this bike originally. Look at the meat. Those things are sick. Those things are thick. Thick. So we're gonna get these puppies installed. Let me slide that brake in. And now that spacer that's right beside that bolt. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. There's on that side. So we're gonna have to lift this up somehow. Yeah, well. You coming soon? Oh. oh my goodness. Uh oh, that's a problem. No, we're gonna pull the tire back, big dumb stupid. Okay. It scared me for a second. Boom! This thing is thick. All right, now, yeah, that's definitely, that tire's bigger. <laughs> All right, hold that. How's that? Grab those two wrenches up there. Okay. Chain's still loose. We don't have our tensioners made, but, oh, it's gonna look sick. Let's get the, I wanna see. Slide it all with her. Then hand me that washer upside. Bam. Okay. Just gonna take the quick wash out. Oh, don't even touch it. Since it was loose, we'll go ahead and pull them out. Oh, that's nice. I like that. <laughs> I like oh, that a lot. Let me grab this camera. They're wide too. So that's gonna grab some earth. Dude, that's way meaner looking than Becca's <laughs> mini bike was. Oh, this whole man. bike just looks awesome. Yeah, so we have I can't to wait get it's painted. Oh yeah, it's getting painted. We're riding it one or two times and then we're getting it powder coated for sure. We're not dilly dallying. What we're worried about is when we put that fender back on, I'm probably gonna have to raise this fender mount up probably all the way to the bottom of this because the fender is gonna get in the tire when we uh, when we flex it but man that looks freaking beefy i like that a lot and we got the catch can on tig welded a bracket up for it so that's sweet and we'll run the valve cover hose to it and then we're building a custom aluminum intake on the next uh, episode putting a 26 i think or i think maybe a 28 millimeter mccuni from go power sports true mccuni check out all the links for everything on this bike the tires everything that's in this hoss of a 301 but just a preview because i think it looks sick with the carb sitting in here oh yeah well you got it on the side so oh gosh <laughs> yeah the carb will sit right in the center of the engine okay. like i said go power sports has these carbs everything will be linked down below uh boom yeah and then we'll have a 180 that goes up i'll tig weld this tig weld to a flange and the carb will sit right there completely out of the way this bike is it's it's awesome. And we're gonna de-chrome it. I don't like chrome handlebars, they'll get powder coated black. Uh, we're gonna build the little chain T 
tensioners, the little ears back here, you know, just like a normal one where it drags the wheel back. I'm gonna do that on the next episode. And we'll have an actual chain tension yeah. pulling up on the chain. And we're gonna do some nylon guides. So if the chain ever touches the swing arm, it won't hurt anything. Ooh, and you didn't see the exhaust. It's done. I already got a hanger, hanger mount right there, just tacked in place, but there's the exhaust on it. Completely away from where you're sitting. Shorty 40 though. Yeah. It looks sick. This whole bike is just awesome. Yeah, this and then we're doing a Com another Coleman, the BT200X. We got some cool plans we're not talking about. It's gonna be meaner, way meaner. I just start talking about all. It's gonna have a, <laughs> I had the beep. So I gotta get the brakes all uh, done up. So next episode, brakes, uh, carb mount, mess with the fenders, and Maybe fin I'll finish. the gas tank. Yeah, I'll finish welding everything off camera. And then uh, we'll hopefully get to hear this thing fire up and ride it. It looks aggressive. And you gotta remember, it's that built 301 so it's gonna have tons of power and more than last time because we're in the Makuni, we had a stock carb on it last time and a ported heads on it and these knobbies grabbing earth and slinging yeah. it what if the box stayed still and it just <laughs> moved <up? laughs> that's the dumbest thing you've ever sorry seen. uh but yeah so check out all the links to the uh, every part that you see on this bike go power sports holding it down with a ton of parts on this bike can't do it without the good old boys down in texas so make sure to check out them links we'll have everything down there we love you guys and god bless, bless.